All right, cool. So today's call, um, it's going to be, we're going to be talking on adding value as a web designer, developer, or, you know, this also could pertain to your, your market that you're in, whether it's like SEO or other uh, parallel services, but uh, primarily for web design and developer adding value in it. And the point of this call is basically to look at things a little bit different. And that's what I'm hoping this call can do could spark up is having a bit of a different perspective on adding value and what that means as a web designer and developer. And let's go ahead and start this slide and get into this and I'll let you know what I mean by that. So it's call number 13, it's adding value as a web designer and developer. So one of the questions uh, that I used to ask and you might've asked, what's the difference between a five page website that's $1,000 and a five page website that's $10,000. And both of them built with Store. So simple answer to that is gonna be value. That's a simple one. But see, it took me a while to figure out what does that really mean? Like what is the difference and how can I get to the next level? One of the common questions that we get is how to make more. So, but by, having a different perspective and looking at from a different uh, angle, what it does is basically it starts a new journey into learning how to position yourself as a high value designer and developer. So there are a few questions that I used to ask and I often hear, and they're like, you know, how do I charge more for my projects? How do I increase my rates without losing projects? and how can I find higher paying clients? You know, and these are all great questions, but really they're not the right ones. The right question to be asking is, how can I give more value to clients in their business? So, and that's, that's the mind state shift right there. That's the shift in perspective. It's not how can I get more, but how can I give more? And the thing that happens is when you are able to give more, you automatically start getting more, but you can't get more until you're able to give more. So why would a client pay so much more for a website? I mean, let's be realistic. You know, you could get a five page WordPress website built for quite cheap. Uh, and you could get one that's pretty decent done for quite cheap. But why would a client come to you and pay you three, four, five, ten thousand plus dollars for the same website they could pay somebody two, three, four, five hundred, a thousand dollars for? And these are some of the main reasons right here. You got to understand there are clients out there that have invested a lot into their business. They've invested a lot into their advertising, a lot into their marketing, a lot into their brand, and they want the better quality. And also a big one is the risk. If somebody pays, if you are positioned as a high value designer that is charging five to $10,000 a website, they know you're good and you're going to be a less risk. Now it is possible to get like a, a pretty good website. I mean, you could get a decent one. You could go on Upwork, you could probably find a decent one for $500, but the risk involved in that, you know, it's like, you really don't know. It's like, you're kind of like gambling, you know, am I going to get a good one? Or are they going to do a, a good job? I'm going to save a lot of money, but it's a gamble. And with that kind of a gamble, uh, it, you know, the risk is having to rebuild it over, not getting the conversions that you're hoping to get and losing a bunch of time. And then the other one is better end results. Uh, clients that are serious about their business, they're serious about their ROI, they're serious about their sales, their conversions, uh, their positioning, their branding. They're, they're very serious about it and they want those results at the end. So on this call, now there's, there's a bunch of things we could do to add value as a web designer and a developer. There's a lot of things we could do. Uh, what we're gonna do in this call though is we're just gonna kind of skim the surface on a few of them. The point of this call is to start to open up that thinking. 
uh, because I know what it did for me. I know like I hit that point in my career where I was making good websites, but I was stuck. I was stuck making websites between $1,000 and $2,000. And I could not break out of that. And I felt like I was, I was uh, scared to charge more because I was worried about losing uh, those projects. Uh, and then also, I just didn't know how to. And so when I started looking at it from a different way, and it was actually pointed out to me, it was pointed out the value. It was pointed out what kind of a value are you giving? And when I started switching my thinking to like, how can I offer more value? That led me on the path and automatically rates started going up and they continued to go up. So let's go ahead and break these down. We're gonna break them down into three different sections and we're gonna skim the top. We're gonna to open it up for discussion, feedback, because I know uh, a lot of you also have experience and questions to uh, put into each one of these right here. So part one is something that we've been discussing lately and that's moving from an order taker to a problem solver. Now, if you're an order taker and that's what you wanna be, that's totally fine. Uh, some developers, or designers, like they're okay with just like giving a list of tasks, executing them, and being done for a set cost. But if you're freelancing and looking to scale up, you're not gonna be able to scale up as an order taker. But being a problem solver, when you, when you position yourself differently and become that problem solver, then you're able to start approaching projects differently, giving more inside each one of those projects. Also, one thing to keep in mind is order takers are easily replaceable. So the first one is going to be client care. And this is number one. This is top of the list right here. And it's having a genuine care for your clients and their businesses. And this must be a core value. Uh, I, don't, I, I just don't feel like this could be done for money. That, that's just my feeling. And I, I'm only going based on what's working for me as well. But I, I think like, approaching a project just for money and just to get paid for it is not really, you're not really gonna be able to give that, that passion, that care for the client and their business. You see, when you truly care for your clients in the business, you're gonna be able to build a deeper relationship with your clients, but you're also gonna push yourself harder to get better at producing results. You know, sometimes I'll see new designers and they'll build a website. I've seen them in this group and on our group calls and some of our uh, BBE group members actually say this, uh, that, you know, that they finished a project, but the project wasn't uh, getting the conversions. It wasn't getting the leads and they felt really bad and they wanted to fix that. And every time I hear a designer or developer express that, I'm, I think like, hell yeah, that, that's somebody on the right path right there because by feeling that way and by thinking that light way, like, damn, what can I have done better to help my clients like get more successful with the product that I built? That, that right there is that true, genuine care. And that's the kind of drive that is gonna take you into like just being able to learn and do better, but give more to your clients, more value to your clients. Uh, it's taking sense of ownership. You know, and that, that's how I feel when I take on a client's project. There's a sense of ownership in it. It's not just like, we're not just here to build a website that looks good. We're here to deliver a tool that is gonna help you in your business. And if the tool I delivered does not help your business, I feel like I failed. I feel like I failed my client. And I'm grateful for that. I'm gonna hold on to it because that right there has put me in a constant state of trying to get better, learning more, and trying to do better for the next client that I get. So the second one is gonna be communication skills. And this might sound you know, obvious or simple, but it's much more than that. And the communication, now this takes time right here. It takes time and practice, but this is learning how to ask the right questions, also listening for the real problems that need to be solved. I mean, of course, you need the basic communication skills. You have to have those. You have to be able to get on a video call with your clients if you're remotely, uh, or even if you're in the same area to actually meet. You gotta be able to get there 
and actually talk with their clients. And you got to be, you know, you got to be professional and polite with it. But as you go on and you are looking to help your clients achieve their goals, you're looking to produce that tool that is actually going to help them with their business growth. You're going to learn how to ask the right questions and get you the information that you need in order to understand their goals so you can deliver on that. Now think of, think of like when you visit a doctor and you gotta like be like the website doctor on this. All right, so I'm just gonna use this doctor analogy. Just say like, let's say you got a pain in your side, all right? You think it's like appendicitis, you think like, oh my God, I need to get my appendix taken out and you go see the doctor you're like, doctor, like, dude, my side is hurting. Uh, I think I got appendicitis. I went on WebMD. I Googled it, and this is what it says on Google. And the doctor asks you, like, three or four questions, touches you in a couple spots, and is like, mm, nah, it's, it's something completely different. Here, here's a prescription. Take this. It'll go away in a few days. And, and that's what we got to do right there. When clients come to us, they know they got a problem. They know they need help with something. They got kind of an idea of what it is, but they're not the expert in this field. We are, and that's what we have to be. So we got to learn how to ask those right questions, just like a doctor would ask a patient. We got to learn how to ask those questions to the client before prescribing. And that's where the listening comes in. It is so hard so hard to hold back and tell clients, oh, this is what you need. I mean, especially when like a client say they reach out, they reach out through an email saying, hey, we need a rebuild of our website. Here's our current website. Here's a website we really like, we want ours to be like. It's so easy to look at that. Oh yeah, we could do that. Let's do this, let's do this. But that's where we got to hold back and listen and first ask questions like, why does it need to be built? Because if we just start giving suggestions and recommendations without really knowing the problem, then we're prescribing the solution without knowing the problem. And just go right back to the doctor. Imagine if you did go to the doctor and you say you got appendicitis, the doctor did not ask you any questions. So do you know what? We'll go ahead and fix that right now. Come on, lay on the table, I'll cut him out. You know, he's gonna do something you don't need. And that's the same thing for us. If we don't find out exactly what the client needs in order to achieve their goals and solve their problems, then we might give them the wrong solution. A really good tip if you, for listening, it's hard for me to listen. Uh, what I did to practice my listening skills, I always have a bunch of notebooks on me. I have them all over the place and every single call I have with a client, it doesn't matter if it's just a check-in or what the call is, or if it's like a deep like dive uh, discovery call, I'm taking notes throughout the whole thing, constantly taking notes. And I take notes because when I am writing, I'm listening to them. So I, write, I take the notes both for reference for later, but to help me listen. So let's go ahead and take a pause, do a Q&A, or like, you know, uh, get back some of your suggestions on this or some of your feedback. And let me stop the screen share. And we'll go ahead and open it up for about five, five to 10 minutes. And then we'll go back to, we'll start uh, part two. Uh, I'll, I'll speak then. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> I just think well, my, my background is sales. It, it, it's banking products for 11 years and motor trade finance and insurance products for the last 20 nearly. Um, and it's the same with any kind of process for, but the, I, I feel that it's about, you're right, you can jump in and that's where a lot of people make the mistakes is that, you know, and you, and you're waiting for them to finish what they're saying because you know what you're going to say and that won't add value it's about thinking and diving deeper and it's uh, i'm just writing all my notes as i normally do when i'm on here it, it's asking why it's always that question is why um that's the first thing 
yeah, someone coming to look at a specific car, why, why that model? Because that's the, the, they can't just answer yes or no to it. They've got to give you a reason as to, you know, why, why they're here, what do they want to do? Why do they want to change their site? Why do they want to improve it? And it, it's all the open questions. It's all about, I think that's the big thing is open questions all the time. Even if they're coming to you with a solution, it's open questions because it'll, they'll know that you've got an understanding of exactly what they want now. And that adds value. That makes them trust you more, pay you more. And that's ultimately what we, what we want to be providing them with what they truly want rather than what they think they want when they t say to you, I want this doing. Same with, 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 with it, anything when they come in looking for a, I don't sell the actual cars, I'll do the other bit for him, but it's the same. Why, why do you want that? Why do you want this? Why do you think you want this? <laughs> in a way, so many people go away with something different because they don't, we're the experts, we're supposed to advise them rather than just do what they say. It's generally when the issues occur when you do just what they say. <laughs> So, yeah, that's that's my and that, that's what I've picked up. Just yeah, that add value. Why listen? It's the biggest thing. And that's the biggest thing with sales and actually selling things to people. Is not people talk about the gift of the gab. It's got nothing to do with that. It's it's actually listening is the most important part of sales, not talking. So absolutely right. Make notes. Remember what people say. That's the important, most important thing for me anyway. That's what's my that's my little bit. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, man. Absolutely. <laughs> but one thing I would ask is about pricing. Do you think being inexperienced like myself? Yes, I've built websites for for me and for 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 people that have asked me to friends, but not professionally. So would that impact? Do you feel on? being able to ask for higher higher value you think that's something that for myself say, i may need to work up to so start off because of my inexperience at a, a lower figure until i get more experience and a, a better portfolio and then to be able to show people what i can do i think like there is a starting point for sure because uh there's a big risk involved. Like say, say like if you're new, there's no way you're going to be able to like go take a job with a company that's depending on hundreds of thousand dollars of sales a month coming from the website, because that, that would just create a big risk and, and just make a mess. So it is best to start off with the smaller clients and get the practice with them, make the mistakes with them. But I also don't think it has to take so long. The quicker you, feel like when you feel like you could actually make a difference i think that's that's it and that's something that comes from within when you believe like okay i could take this project i could actually help you improve your conversions i could help you have a better positioning for your brand then you could start raising up your prices because your value has gone up then but uh from for me what worked for me i could share my experience is i started off low and I try to make a massive jump. I try to jump really high, really fast, and it hurt. It didn't work out for me. Uh, so I stepped back and I started going gradually and I started being realistic about, you know, just it's that self-honesty thing too. You know, like what can I really do? But I've also moved up fast, but gradually. Cool. Thanks, yeah, that's, uh, that's probably something that that, that's the thing for me is, is like positioning myself not too low, but not out pricing either. So, yeah. Thank you. Another thing too, just real quick. Uh, I believe past experience from, it's not just web design and development. Like you got sales experience. That's value right there that you carry on into what you're doing. So you don't have to start off super low. You already got a jump start. Yeah. You know, and I think like we all have other experience in other areas that we could carry 
into our web design and development career. So I don't think we have to start off really low. We just got to know where our strengths are at, utilize those strengths in adding the value, and then look at the areas that we need to improve in order to like really get to that level. Cool. Anybody else have questions or feedback before we jump into part two? All right, cool. Let me go ahead and share the screen again. And play. All right, so part two. Now, this part is going to be more on the skills and developing the skills to become an expert. So first, it's good to know the principles of design and development to learn uh, both those principles and to be constantly learning how to produce better quality work. Because I mean, we, it, at the end, we got to have an end result. And we all know like a website that looks good compared to a website that doesn't. And it's not just how the website looks, but how is it built? Is it built uh, functioning? Is it fast? Uh, is it clean inside the back end? Uh, and then also for the design principles, is it spaced out properly? Is it easy to read? Is the content in the proper structure? Is there a funnel to your call to action? So there's an ongoing process of learning these, but definitely a de developer, I feel a developer should know design principles and a designer should also know development principles if we're gonna be building websites as a service. And basically, you want to go from this red bucket over to this car. And this is a difference right here. Now, both of these could be a five-page Elementor website. And I know, like, I've posted before in groups, you know, I posted before about building a $10,000 Elementor website, and I got slammed. I got slammed by some people. You know, I did, like, you know, uh, I got slammed by, and that's okay. I understand, like, it's hard to understand. I just feel like unless if you're looking at it from this angle, from the angle of value, it's hard to understand how could an Elementor website that's only five pages be worth $10,000 or even more. But see, there is a massive difference. So the next one is going to be project management skills. And uh, we've, we've talked about this in some of our last calls. Thing is, without it, there is chaos. Uh, that's like when you start having scope creep, when the project goes on late, the project is supposed to be a two to three week project, but now it's a four to six month project. Uh, so project management skills and starting to develop those, starting to build your systems and processes and, keeping, and keep on refining them. In time, you're gonna see, you'll have processes in place. They're gonna be smooth, they're gonna save you lots of valuable time, and it's gonna deliver a better experience and results for your clients. And this is something, and this is why we've been bringing this up recently too in some of our calls, like the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about building onboarding processes. Now, just imagine from the client's perspective, uh, they interview a few, uh, designers, web designers, or web developers for the project. They need a website built. And you have some that don't have processes. And they're like, yeah, we could build this. And they just give a round, they just give a number. It just come up with a number. And then they talk to somebody else and then they outline the process with them. They say this is, and then they can show them the process. They can show them, okay, yes, this is how we're going to do it. In week one, we're going to start doing this. We're going to start with our research and strategy. Week number two, we're going to start a wireframe and mock up, and then we're going to send it out for revisions. And then we're going to be using Trello for our management or Asana. We're going to be able to show you designs through Envision. Let me show you how Envision works. And then they can show you, see, these are like the processes you have in place. And just look at it from a client's perspective. When a client is interviewing somebody and that's basically what they're doing when they're talking to potential web designers they're interviewing them and you're in the you're in the the meeting the consultation the interview and all of a sudden you have something just professionally laid out they're going to be like wow can i they're probably going to be thinking can i afford how much are these guys going to cost me 
because you're going to sound so much more expensive because you have something more professional in place, but you're going to stand out more. So if you are bidding for a project, let's say you're bidding for a project and you bid 5,000, but you got other people bidding probably way lower by having something like this in place, you're actually showing the client like you're gonna get more out of us. If you have the money, this is what you're gonna get. So you could either go with that, which is you know basically that red car that we saw on the last slide, or you could go with us and this is what you're gonna get, a power driven website that was built with a steady process. So having project management skills is essential. And then the next one, and this is a huge one. This is one that I've been currently uh, working on and looking at the last uh, about almost two years now. And that's learning strategy, uh, learning UI, UX fundamentals, learning about funnels, uh, conversion optimizations. And once you get to a point where it's all about achieving goals and solving problems, then it becomes more than just making a website look good. Uh, it's about more like delivering measurable results, finding out the client's goals and achieve them, find out their problems and solve them. And this is where massive value comes from right here. All right, and with that, we're gonna break out into Q&A. And you know what, Lauren, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put you on the spot because I know you, you like, kick ass with a uh, with, uh, uh, strategy and you guys do an amazing like job over at Brave Factor with strategy. You know, uh, I'm gonna put you on a spot. Can you give us some more insight on how strategy could add, will add more value to what you could deliver to your clients and their businesses and what kind of impact it makes on a client's business? I think you kind of nailed it on the head already with the doctor analogy. And that's the thing that opened my eyes to strategy too, because I've been doing strategy about as long as you, not very long. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do that best. Um, but it's like you said, it's like you care more about the client than the sale. And we try to convey that when we're in those early conversations before we land the project of, listen, I don't know if you need this, let's do strategy together and let's figure out if this is exactly what you need or if, you know, a video library is exactly what you need within your website or whatever that is. Um, Cause, and I always say this line, <laughs> it's a sales trick, but it works for me. Um, it's because I don't want you to waste your money on something that's not gonna, you know, fulfill your goals or, um, you know, work for you. And that's true. I don't want my clients to waste their money with me. I don't wanna just take their money and run with it. So I think that little bit always helps us kind of jump up in price because we're not just looking at it, this is a short term job, we're looking at their whole financials um, and making sure that their goals for the year or for the five years is gonna be hit with the product that we build. So it kind of like reaffirms in their mind that um, if they spend that money with us, it's actually going to last longer. Um, in terms of strategy, I mean, I'm still trying to figure that out, but you know, it's like Ian said, it's, it's just really asking a lot of questions because what I've heard and what I've seen so far is everybody, all the clients kind of have the answers within them and they just need somebody to guide them through it. Um, and the more that you can position yourself as that guide, the more they'll trust you, not just for this project, but for the future as well. So it kind of helps build that long-term relationship. What else? <laughs> Did that answer your question? <laughs> All right, sorry, getting notifications. Distractions, distractions. I gotta put the distractions away. Um, no, that's, that's it right there. Uh, personally, I feel, I, I remember on, uh, it was, I think my third or fourth project, it was my first WordPress website I built. Like I was building just HTML, CSS sites. I built it and it came out really good. Like, like I just got lucky. 
You know, I felt like I got lucky where it just came out really good. And I was really proud of this website. And then the client came back to me. I met her like six months later and she's a really nice lady, really nice. And, you know, I thought like, Oh my God, how are you doing? And she just looked at me. She's like, I never got one person contact me yet. And I felt so small. I felt bad. You know, I felt like that, that right there changed something inside of me where I never wanted to feel like that again. I didn't want to just build a website just to get the money. I wanted to actually do something that could help out. One thing that, that, that also helps me too is just being straight up honest too with clients in those cases, because if clients, they don't have the budget to get the things needed in order for them to succeed, you gotta let them know like, hey, you're gonna need SEO. You're going to need marketing. You're going to need this as well. But we could get you as ready as we can for the website. And I think that's hard too because this group here probably we are a little bit more the production side than the consultant strategist side. Um, so you know, there's there's always room to collaborate together on that, and to like you guys can always ask us questions too, and we can help advise you on on running your own strategy too. Um, but if you want to just be that order taker, that's fine. I mean, we all got to get food on our plates. And, um, but there is a mindset shift when you, if you want to upgrade your services and you want to upgrade your agency or your solopreneur that focusing more on the long term and not so much on just the project will transform your business. Definitely. I'm really curious though, Jeff, my question for you is what was that harsh feedback that you got about Elementor pricing? Oh, like I had, uh, I had some comments of people saying, if you're charging $10,000 for Elementor site, you're ripping them off. Why did they feel that way? They didn't see the value. That's the only thing that I could think of if someone mm -hmm. really feels and like, I didn't get mad. I felt, in fact, I felt kind of bad. I mm -hmm. felt like, you know, like, damn, here's another professional out there that doesn't understand what we could actually do for clients. Right. You know? Right. And that's why I'm hoping like this call and like for the BBE members could, you know, help them see like, we could do so much more. There's so much opportunity and room for growth, room for scaling, uh, to build a more sustainable life for ourselves. Like we don't have to be stuck at one level. We can go to another level, but it, it does take that, that mind shift, uh, change. That reminds me of something that Christo does and I don't understand it completely, but, um, it is kind of a mind shift. Mind, mind shift thing um, because Elementor is just a tool, right? It's just a tool for end, ends to the means. Um, it's a great one, but really at the end of the day, we're solving a business problem. Um, so something that Chris Doe does is kind of like in five years, where do you picture yourself? What has made you really happy? And so maybe the person will respond like, my business has grown 10 times or something, right? And so he works with them backwards on how to accomplish that. And then at the end, he asked them, I'm probably butchering this, please stop. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Sorry, the future group. Um, but basically, he asked them like, okay, so you want to work less, you want to 10 times your company, you want blah, 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 blah. If I help you accomplish that, how much is that worth to you? And a lot of times people are like, you know, it's priceless. I'd pay millions of dollars if I could 10 times my company, if I could have more time with my family, if I could actually have like results that I'm hoping for. And so that's kind of the way to shift it is like, if this product is something that gets those results, what are those results worth to you? Um, and how can we help you get there? Because at the end of the day, that means we've been successful too. Mm. I like that. Selling the results. Yeah. But it goes back to, you got to back it up. <laughs> you got to actually help them get there. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the step two of it. It takes, you know, what? like it, it takes time. It takes work, but it's like, as soon as you can start going at it, like for strategy, I feel a good place to start. Um, don't get overwhelmed with strategy sessions and doing all that right now. I think a good place to start is just learning UI and UX fundamentals 
learning about funnels, learning about conversions. Because if you're building a website, you can learn how to make that website function better. And then just practice, practice asking questions. Uh, I'm still in the process of learning, getting better at it now, but God, just three, four, five, six months ago, I, I was still, fun I still didn't know the right questions. I was just, what I was taught to do was just keep asking the right ones until you start learning the right ones. And that, that was when I started seeing which questions I was asking, what that was getting results. Now I'm walking away from meetings where clients are telling me like, wow, that was so productive. They're like, I just had somebody last week say, I just had a call with several other designers and this has by far been the most productive. Yeah, and I'm just like, okay, it's working. It works, it works, you know? All right. <laughs> And for everybody here too, Jeff and I are all, we're both self-taught. Like we're not, we haven't gone to school for this. We've, we've just watched a lot of YouTube and worked within a lot of groups and, <laughs> you know, kind of just stumbled through it on our own. So it's possible if, for anybody. And, you know, it just takes a lot of work and listening and refining to make your process better. Six years ago, I didn't even know how to send emails. I didn't even have a computer. I, I was anti-computers. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, I was a manager at Home Depot and I got promoted and then another manager came in, took pictures of the shelf and emailed it to our corporate manager and I was blown away. I'm like, dog, how did you do that? It was like, what? I'm like, how did you email the picture? Uh, yeah, that's where I was at six years ago. So. Well, I'm really hoping that, you know, with these two, a lot of it is trial and error. Uh, a lot of it is just hard work, but also I'm hoping that you guys can learn quicker from, you know, from errors by, I like to, I like to be vulnerable and show my mistakes. That way others can learn from it. All right, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the third one, part three. All right, so part three is showing your value. Uh, how do you let clients know that you're different, that you are not a lower, a, a lower charging designer or developer? How do, how do you separate yourself? And the first one, this is a big one. Uh, and this is one I feel that we always could do better and that is optimizing your portfolio. You know, a good portfolio, it's going to tell the story of the project. It's going to show what you do, uh, what were the goals of the project, the problems that needed to be solved, and how did you solve them. And also, a good portfolio doesn't, you don't need tons of websites built. All you need is about three or four good ones. Uh, and this is something that you really got to take time in. Uh, usually I, when I get portfolios sent to me and I get, uh, developers or designers requesting to work with us, most of the time they just sent a list of links and I'm guilty of that. I used to do the same thing when I was trying to get work was I would just send all the websites we built. Cause I felt like if I sent 20 links of websites that I built, that it showed that I had a lot of work when really that's going to hurt you big time. That is absolutely the wrong way to show your portfolio and show work. The thing is, it's like whenever I get that, I'm going to click on one link and I'm going to know in about five seconds if I'm going to look any further. Uh, and that you don't want to be inside that position. And another thing too, your work is always going to be improving. You know, what you are accomplishing today and what you are building today next year is going to blow that out the water. So why show work from one or two years ago that is not as good as the work that you're producing right now? But if you were to take the time and put together, you know, a proper portfolio where you could do it on your website, you could do it in Behance. Uh, those are two really good places that you could do it at, but you put it in there and you show like the whole project. Uh, you don't just show the link, you show like, you can put in screenshots, you can put in 
like right in there like this is what we did this is the challenges that we face this is how we overcame the challenges you know that's going to let potential clients know your thinking process that's going to position you in a much higher category and if somebody is looking for a designer or developer and they have a bunch of people just sending them tons of links but then they have one person sending them just three websites, three projects. I shouldn't even say websites, three project portfolios that's just put together. They're gonna, you're, you're automatically gonna be put in a whole other category. The next one is creating content and social media. Uh, I just combine these two because I feel like they both can kind of like intertwine but uh, it's making yourself visible, visible and discoverable. You know, uh, when someone shows interest to me and I get like on Facebook or I'll get on LinkedIn and sometimes I'll have someone show interest in, actually I get a lot. I get a lot of people, you know, looking uh, to show interest in work. And sometimes I'm too busy to check because I'm just too busy. Sometimes like we are hiring, we are looking and then I'll go back on, and, and check them out. But then like you go to their profile and you can't see anything like not even like their website, like even Facebook. And it feels like I kind of feel like some of us are like hiding like what we do and who we are, you know, because I mean, on Facebook profiles, uh, if you don't show like your website on there, like this is this is who you are, your agency or your name, show the website, you know, like let it be known. And let yourself be discoverable and easy to find. A lot of people ask, how do I find more clients? That's one of the most common questions that we get. But really, how do clients find you? And this is where you need to like put stuff out there. Just put it out there. Uh, social media is a good place to do things at, like start a Facebook page and post regularly. You could do this also on Instagram. You could do this on Behance, Dribble, uh, somewhere where you're posting vis uh, uh, consistently. LinkedIn. Uh, also, like, I, I, I can speak for myself when I am doing research and I'm thinking about hiring somebody or I'm looking at looking for talent. I, I, I take a look and I see how active they are. You know, I, there's dates on posts, and that's the reason why I say do it regularly. Because if you're like, say, just posting one thing a week you're going to show like, Hey, you're somebody that's like super active. You're involved. It's like, you're somebody that is doing something, you know? And like, you're not a mystery to me, you know, you're not like hard to understand. Like you're, you're out there already. And same thing with creating content. You could do this with blog posts. Uh, there's a lot of ways to just keep putting constant content uh, and social media out there. And then the last one is going to be giving back and teaching, mentoring. And I feel this is something that's overlooked uh, so much. And just by teaching, you know what teaching does is teaching actually puts you in a position of learning. Uh, like me right now, I'm learning constantly from this. And like you just... It, it, it's, it just puts you in such a good cycle. You're giving back, you're putting out like, there's a, I believe in the law of reciprocation where what you put out there, you get back, you know, and, and it goes back to like what Lauren said as well. It's not about, you know, the money. It's about helping people. And when you're trying to help people and you're of service, it could be clients, but then it could be also peers, uh, newer developers, designers, and, you know, or, just anyone, and when you're out there being of service and you're helping others, you're gonna be getting that good, it's gonna be coming back to you as well. But a big thing, what I found the value in teaching others is it does keep me focused on learning. It's really easy to get caught up in client projects. It's easy to get caught up and months goes by because I'm working on projects, I'm trying to get this design, and, but I'm not really growing, I'm not learning anything. But when I start teaching things like building processes, I wanna learn more about building processes. I got some processes built, but I need to improve them. So this right here, this is me learning right here. So we're all learning right here, but give back and help other people and you'll keep learning. 
All right, and how did I stop the screen share too early? Oh, well. All right, so the conclusion. Now, I want to leave this. I want to leave you all and ask you guys all to, like, take time with this final question right here and to, like, dwell on it. Dwell on it over the weekend or something. And, like, really put some thought into it. How will you start adding value that separates you from designers and developers that are charging lower prices? I want you to take time on that and, like, start to look at the areas where you could start to add value. Like I said, this whole call, today's purpose, was to trigger these thoughts, was to plant the seed and start to look at things in a different way, more as how much more can I give rather than how much more can I get. So I will, I'll go ahead and post this also inside Facebook and uh, take time on it, really take a look at it. Uh, this has been a game changer in my career, most definitely. This has changed everything and has put me on a path that, that I, I, I'm, I'm excited for. I'm excited because I'm doing things now I never thought I could do. Uh, when I started building websites, I did not know I would be making impacts on people's businesses and lives. I did not realize that I could actually do that. And I want everyone to know here that you can. You have it within you. You can do it. Uh, and you can charge a lot more for what you're doing. There's no limit to this. Uh, the more value you can offer, the more you could do, the more impact that you can make on other people's businesses, the more you're gonna grow your business. And with that, we'll open it up for Q&A. And I just wanna say thank you everyone for being here and making this possible. And <laughs> Oh, whoa, who's that? <laughs> Clement, what's up, man? Oh, I can't hear you, Clement. We can't hear you. So, oh. <laughs> it's like a ring. It's like a ringing noise. Is it? There you go. Okay. Uh, currently, I'm I'm building, I'm starting my uh, uh, agency. Actually, it's already about one year. Uh, I and also I'm so. Uh, I'm very uh, happy or interesting in building website. No, I'm getting better in building a website using Elementor because uh, and also I'm kind of a person of business I can communicate it with clients and uh, everything I also have a background in background or interest in SEO although I'm not uh, really expert in there but uh, I have experience about the SEO internet marketing something like that but uh, currently, my likeness is about UI and UX. <laughs> UI and UX. Uh, as a business owner, I know I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, master everything. Yeah. But at least I know the. At least I have to know which website has a good. UX has a good UI uh, because, uh, for example, like this: if I want to master UI and UX, I should be a web designer, not a, uh, not, not everything. So, but I want to because I want to have a uh, life, scale up my business, my agency business. Uh, I think I have to know at least at some point that. This website is a, has a good UI and UX. So maybe uh, Lauren and maybe Jeff or everybody have uh, tips about UI and UX, uh, at least uh, as a business owner or business agency owner. 
I have to know the UI UX until what uh, level. Mm -hmm. I I have I hope you get what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> What, what um, do you, oh, go ahead. No, it's okay. Gotcha. I was going to ask you uh, for your agency, what is, what kind of work do you want to produce? What is the main focus on the work that you want to uh, produce? Because I have, uh, I, I learned about conversion. I know how to convert people. Uh, what is a good website that have, uh, what is a professional website should have logo, prefixion, CTA, and also I learned about the AIDA, you know, uh, the, the funnel, uh, the AIDA, uh, the AIDA model. Uh, I know the, uh, the principle of a good website, uh, a good conversion website. Also, I know how to op optimize the website. The, based on the SEO, on page, off page, and everything. I also know that a good website has to be good in speed, uh, performance speeds. And I also learn about that. Uh, uh, until now, my actually my clients are happy with me. Uh, because I, at first, I get the first client from my fellow agency. He has specialty in uh, social media agency. And then I offer them that I can make a website. The value I give is the website uh, has, uh, the client will get a website that uh, good performance. The, the measurement is using GT matrix A. So that is my guarantee. So uh, my fellow agency is very happy and then uh, give clients almost until now, almost eight to nine clients. So but, sorry yeah. to cut you off. Uh, so your main thing, your main is going to be uh, is just providing websites. That is that going to be your main uh, uh, service? Currently, uh, yes. Designing uh, and development? for the long term. Uh, I want to give uh, like a SEO service, SEM service, and everything. But uh, I know that I will not do it by myself. I have some yeah. friends, some vendors. Well, first of all, to master one. So if you had a choice to master one thing, uh, would it be web design and web de like? Yeah, yeah. So it'd be just okay. And you're already learning conversions and learning funnels. And everything like that, and implementing that inside inside your websites. Yes. All right. That that's UI right there. Like that is UI. So you've been learning UI. Then, if you're learning funnels and how to guide traffic through there. So, the best advice I got when I started off and I was new. See, I started off as a web developer, <clears throat> and I was learning like ten different languages at once. Like I was learning everything at once and I was going crazy with it. And I, uh, I met a very successful web developer and he stopped me. He's like, Jeff, choose one and just master that one first. And that was what changed. That was the best advice I got when I was new because I did exactly that. And just to let you know, like compared how that worked for me, I had another buddy that I started off with and we both started off the same time, the same way. And he was also trying to learn everything at once and he didn't listen. I stuck with one. I chose one thing and I, I got really good. I chose CSS and I got really good at CSS. I just mastered CSS. Him, you know what? He's still changing. I have an agency right now. So like, the choosing one thing, mastering it, and then letting it branch out works, you know. I think for me, because I'm on the flip side, because um, when I started, you know, 12 years ago doing web design development, it was like not a thing. <laughs> we built things in tables. Um, <laughs> so like UI, UX all came up, you know, the last 
what, five, eight years? Uh, so it's still relatively new. And I feel like within just web design and development in itself, you can have an expert on like every different facet of it. You know, the SEO, the, the UI, UX, the, the code itself, the design itself, um, the user interaction, you know, all of that, it could be a specialist. So my suggestion for nowadays, it's kind of like, if you ever decide to have a business partner, partner with someone that's the opposite of your skills. Um, and trust them on being an expert. And that's what, what I try to do, at least with development is, you know, I am garbage at any database stuff, uploading to hosting, anything like that. I know it's laughable, but I, I, I'm terrible at it. So I just hire people that I really, really trust and, and let them do it and have a system in place to double check them and make sure that they're hitting the minimum goals, but hire somebody. With that said though, it's good to be a little bit knowledgeable um, and you can do that, you know, with YouTube or um, reading articles or something and just kind of get a general idea of what is good UI, what does it mean, how users feel, how can you use UX to um, accomplish goals better, but yeah, you're already on the right track. Thank you. All right, guys, any questions before we end today's call? Cool, so I'm gonna pull up that question again. Let me uh, put it in the chat for everyone. So put it inside the chat. So the question, how will you start adding more value that separates you from designers and developers that are charging lower prices? Uh, you could start by putting an action plan together. Look at like what you feel like your strengths are. Look at what you know uh, you feel like you could improve on. And this right here, this could change. This could change things. Take you in another direction. I can tell you though, you can do so much more with web design by helping people, helping their businesses and making a real impact. That's it for today, today's call. I'm, I'm out of steam right now. I just lost steam. <laughs> I think I, I got my cap at like one hour of talking. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording.